Dear friends, this Shabbat we're going to read the portion of Tetzaveh, but as well we're going to take out a second Torah in which we read the portion of Zachar, which talks about Amalek, the arch enemy of the Jewish people. And every year in the Shabbat preceding Purim, we read this portion, which it's a mitzvah from the Torah. The only time it's a biblical commandment for every Jew to hear the reading of the Torah is when we read this portion, and you should definitely try to be in synagogue the Shabbat as we read this portion. Why do we make such a big deal about the story of Amalek, an enemy that we knew of long ago that tried to stop the Jewish people when they left Egypt and before they came into the land of Israel? What is unique about Amalek? And especially as in the time of Purim, and we know that Haman was a descendant of Amalek, who again tried to destroy the Jewish people, and then the Nazis, Hitler, Yemach Shemo, and other people throughout history tried to destroy the Jewish people, the Amaleks, the arch enemies of the Jews, what is it about Amalek? So the Torah portion that we read gives us a little bit of insight into how Amalek works on many levels in terms of trying to fight the Jewish people. And being the arch enemy of the Jews, Amalek doesn't just want that the Jewish people should be second class citizens to them and they should control the Jews. Amalek wants total destruction of the Jewish people and the Jewish ideas. What is it that the Jewish people brought to the world that Amalek was fighting? The Jewish people, our existence, is a symbol that God is alive and God is real. That God is relevant in this world. That the reason the world is here, the reason God made this world, that there's a purpose of how humanity has to come and raise itself to be closer to God. And humanity has to learn how to listen to our Creator, God, and how best to become the best that we can be. And this comes with the duty of following the messages of the seven Noahide laws and the 615 commandments for the Jewish people. And God gets the Jewish people as a nation through taking us out of Egypt, showing us tremendous love and care and taking care of every little need, getting us ready to give us the Ten Commandments and to say, Jews, I'm giving to you the most beautiful an easiest way to become the most successful and great achievers for yourselves and to bring the world to this great place and the great heights it can achieve. And Amalek is watching this and says, how do we stop this in our track, in its tracks? How do we break this bond that the Jews are creating with God? And what Amalek tries to do is to take out any type of excitement, any type of joy any type of extra oomph that we can give to our project. He says, let me first get rid of that. Because once the Jews feel that everything they have to do is duty bound, is, is heavy, is difficult, then they will start straying. But as long as the Jewish people feel excited about doing what God wants, even if it's difficult, disciplined way of life, they will do it happily. And that's what Amalek first tries to do. It tries to take out all the joys of Judaism. There was a famous Yiddish saying, Shvert Zayin it's difficult to be a Jew. And there was a, early, a rabbi in the early days of the 1900s, as Jews were streaming to America, that said, please get these words out of our vocabulary. The word that's difficult to be a Jew is that's exactly what Amalek tries to tell us. It's difficult to be a Jew. Even if you have to do it, it's difficult. It feels like you're carrying the burden of the world on you. It makes it much less interesting and definitely doesn't inspire us to do what we have to do. It's beautiful to be a Jew, to be part of God's inner circle of helping make this world, partnering with God. This is what we are here for. So we read about Amalek before the story of Purim and the miracle of Purim to remember that Amalek takes the joys out of Judaism, takes the beauty out of Judaism. It tries to make us say, you want to be different, you want to behave with your own holidays and your own specific way, but don't carry it proudly, hide in your houses behind closed curtains. And then what do we have? The holiday of Purim, the most joyous Jewish holiday. We get dressed up, we're, we're the happiest we can be because that's what Judaism is really all about. So as we fight Amalek today and as we read about Amalek, we have to remember, bring the joy back into Judaism. Bring the excitement back into Judaism. Recognize the treasure that we have that was given to us to be able to celebrate 
the, most, the truth of the world, to celebrate God's purpose and God's investment and belief in every one of us and how great we can be and how we can partner with God to make this world the most beautiful, blessed, uh, great world that this is. And this is what we go into Shabbos and Purim, this is what we have to think. Bring a little bit of that joy back into your everyday Jewish activity, the everyday Jewish life. And you'll find a very different Judaism that not only is not a burden, but it carries you to the greatest heights in your life. So let's start bringing in the joy. Join us for Purim as well, this Wednesday night and Thursday night. Lots going on at Chabad. Check out on our website and Facebook page. And we'd love to see you all here. So meanwhile, I want to wish you Shabbat Shalom. May God bless you all, love you all. Shabbat candle lighting time in Montreal this week is 5.14. And may you only be full of blessings and good things.